Hello and welcome to episode 84 of the Pixel Street Podcast. My name is Joel Campbells and as always I am joined by the man who is ranked 15,437 in Halo Reach, Connor Cop. Honestly, that's probably not far off. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, assuming... Well, now, we're going to talk a lot about Halo Reach today because there's a lot of numbers going out there and it just came out on PC and Xbox One, but... Assuming, let's say, 300,000 people played it day one, yesterday, what rank do you think you... Or do you think you're, like, in the top third? Top um, eighth? Where, where do you think you I, stand? I would say if you tracked me yesterday, I, I'm definitely in the bottom third. Uh, but I think if you pulled the matches from this morning, I would put myself in the top half, maybe the top third. I was pretty good at Halo back in the day. Not gonna, not gonna, you know, uh, play myself down or anything, but... Man, uh, it is not a modern video game. Yeah, it it definitely, you can feel it, especially like <laughs> when I was playing online, I could tell what people were like noobs at Halo, like old oh, school yes. Halo, because uh, like their aiming isn't there or they'll go to try and sprint and then they'll just like crouch, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Yeah, or people just throwing grenades because they're trying to scope in or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, we're going to talk more about that later. Um uh yeah also this week we're going to be talking about uh destiny 2 the season of dawn and then if you stay till the very end we are going to do a full jedi fallen order spoiler cast because john's not here today so we can do whatever we want it's true we're allowed to talk about star wars um but before we get to that you can feel free to follow us on twitter at pixel street pod uh check out our facebook by searching for pixel street podcast there um, and yeah, and you can listen to us on Fridays on iTunes, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, but yeah, that should be all the stuff we got to wrap up. Let's get into the new releases. Man, taking a look at this list, it's just uh, we're we're kind of in that period, you know, the the end of the year, nothing really happening. Everybody's kind of squeezed out the big stuff ahead of the Game Awards shows and stuff. Um, yep taking a look at this ashen did you did you play ashen on uh on xbox i, I, I want to say it's on game it. pass yeah it's a game pass game i tried it but it it just wasn't for me kind of the same reason why like um what am i thinking of dark souls isn't for me where it's just kind of sure. like like you take very minimal like you you take a lot of damage when you get hit like twice yeah, I put a, a decent amount of time into it when it dropped, uh, and I, I thought it was relatively enjoyable. I haven't checked in with it in quite some time, but uh, that's coming to PlayStation 4, Windows PC, and Switch on December 9th, along with that Terminator game that I keep forgetting exists. Oh, yeah. They're really trying to push that by putting Terminator stuff in other games. He's everywhere. Literally everywhere. Gears of War 5. Friggin' just... I, I'm so sick of Terminator at this point. And is Hold the on. movie even out? Um, yeah, I think it did come out, but I don't think it did great. That sounds about right. Also, another thing. What is this Avicii game? Wait a second. What? Because he's dead. Yeah, Soar he's... through vocal melodies, sweep each fade, and attack every beat in 25 of Avicii's biggest hits. In this enthralling, futuristic, rhythm action experience. What is this? Is there... There's wow. no videos. Hold uh, on. So if, if you pull up the full description header, it says, Fly solo or bring the pulse-pounding frenetic energy of an Avicii concert to your living room with your friends in cooperative gameplay. No, sorry. Competitive gameplay. Uh, which makes that sentence even worse. Hold on, I have the trailer up, and if you're watching on YouTube, the podcast, you can see it. Um, and it says, in 2015, hold on, in 2015, Avicii began work with Hello There Games to fuse music with serene visual scapes to, to give the world a new way to explore his creations. Um, then it looks like, uh, since his passing, Hello There Games, along with Avicii's father, um, you know, they've brought this game to life, I guess. Which is... I guess uh, I just... I Don't guess it's pretty cool, you know, since that he's dead, that uh, they were able to finish it. It kind of looks like Amplitude. In a way. Connor, did I lose you? I'm here now. Okay. <laughs> I don't but know yeah, if you dropped out or I dropped out. I don't know. But yeah, it looks kind of like Amplitude, so... 
that kind of game. Maybe Sayonara Wild Hearts almost. In a way. Okay, so just another rhythm track game then. Yeah. I mean, sure. If you're a big Avicii fan, then buy it. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know if I can recommend that safely. Is there anything else on this list? Is there anything at all coming out before we record next week? No. Um, Gross. Yeah, I don't know. There's some amiibo, Shovel Knight amiibo coming out next week, along with King of Cards, but. Shovel Knight I just want to say that those Shovel Knight Amiibos were announced at last year's Game Awards. Really? Not that I, I care, uh, as I really don't, but they were announced at last year's Game Awards, and we're almost to this year's Game Awards, and they're still not out. Yeah, and what's even crazier is like I'm looking way down this list like to the end of December, and I just don't see anything. Like, yeah. nothing worth like even noting. Okay, and then you got Dragon Ball Z Kakarot coming January 17th. Yeah, I think that's honestly our, our next uh, title that's even really worth talking about at this point. Yeah. So, <laughs> look forward to us skipping this segment for the next couple weeks. <laughs> yep, just go ahead and skip forward like a minute every week on our show. Yeah. All right, um, I guess with that, let's get into kind of what we've been playing. Um, I've really only played two games, so I'll let you go first. Well, I guess... My two games are the same as yours, um, but first and foremost, I've been playing more Jedi Fallen Order. I, you know, beat the game. Uh, me and Connor are here are gonna do a spoiler cast at the end of the show, but I mean, I love the game. I think it's awesome. I turned it down to the easiest difficulty just so I could get through it, so I didn't get anything spoiled. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever go back and try and up the difficulty at all, but I definitely enjoyed my time with it. Um, I do want to get all the achievements in it, but I don't know. I'll have to set time aside to do that. Yeah, I mean, I kind of grinded through a little bit, and I, I actually ended up 100%ing every single planet. I got all the different collectibles, all the different treasure chests and everything that you can go through, uh, and kind of did my, my thing in it. Uh, and man, I, I just really, really like that game. Um, I A lot of stuff that I see from people just seems very iffy on it, and, I, and I've heard reports of a lot of you know, texture problems, a lot of loading issues, uh, just all kinds of problems here and there. And I, I really feel like I did not experience too many problems uh, with the game overall. My experience with it was was pretty fluid, uh, pretty smooth. I thought that the combat flow is fantastic. It's a very Sekiro. Uh, you hear a lot of people describe it as uh, Dark Souls-esque. I feel that it leans a little bit harder into the Sekiro genre. Um, the traversal does have some wonky moments, but I feel like once you get used to it, it's it's pretty set and solid. And I agree, the game is fantastic. Um, I played on on Jedi Knight, which I think is the one above normal, and I or the the one above easy. Sorry, uh, and I did consider stepping it down a few times because that game does throw a lot of shit at you pretty quick. Yeah, uh, towards the midsection. Yeah, I was playing on a harder difficulty, and then I just got to the point where I was like. I don't really want to sit here and struggle with most of this game. So I decided to up the difficult or lower it, sorry. Um, so that I, you know, can get through it. Um, but yeah, other than that, like the problems that people are having, I didn't really have that many issues, I guess, because I, it, the only two times that I had problems was there was one time when my, or both times my game crashed. It did that thing where the audio kind of like glitches or it's like, and then your game crashes. Oh, you motorboated. Yeah. Yeah. It did that twice. And, but other than that, I didn't really have any issues. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the traversals because like they're just falling off the map a bunch. But I mean, to that, I say, get good son. <laughs> I think that's the right answer. Really. I, I didn't encounter that many issues with it. Sure. There was an odd death here or there that I felt was relatively unfair, but when you stack it up against other games of the genre, uh, you know, I, I feel like I had very similar issues in the Uncharted games, and they're known for, for their uh, traversal being some of the best out there. So uh, I think it's it's just a little nitpicky uh, for some of the stuff I've heard. But yeah, game's fantastic. We'll probably talk a, a little bit more about it here at the end for the spoil, uh, spoiler cast. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's quick thoughts and feelings, I suppose. Yeah. Um, what's the other game you've been playing? So I've got two other ones. I'll, I'll save the one because we're playing the same thing, and I'll just kind of chime in on what you got. But the other one I've been 
dipping my toes into is uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Did you uh, did you pick that up on sale? I did not actually. Uh, I got it through work, and I've had it sitting for like uh, since release day. Wow! And I just haven't touched it. Yeah, I've I've had no no want or or desire to touch it. Um, I played a little bit of Wildlands and fell off incredibly quickly, uh, as it just wasn't for me. Yeah, I um I actually also played Breakpoint for like an hour and a half, um because my Game Pass buddy bought it. So <clears throat> I don't think I could get into that game. I I don't know how I feel about it. I my friends that have been playing it, like they've barely touched the story. They've just kind of been going around doing their own thing. So I I'm not sure what the draw is of it. Whether it's you know just playing co-op with people or what the deal is, but I don't think I can get into it. I think for me, it's it's a lot of freeform bullshit. Like, Wildlands was was so, like, drop you in this sandbox, but there's such a massive focus to where you need to be and what you need to be doing, uh, as well as, like, there's a specific path to power uh, for that game. And I feel like Breakpoint kind of opens that up a little bit to where you're kind of just, you get dropped in a similar sandbox, but it's it really opens up quickly and lets you kind of take things at your own pace it'll let you tackle different objectives and everything and i feel like it's a little bit closer to uh even though it's it's kind of been positioned as a loot game i think that the gunplay is just a little more refined in breakpoint uh which might be why i'm enjoying it a little bit more uh most of my experience has been solo in the game i'm probably about uh let's say 10 hours in it or so at this point uh so i've put a decent amount of time into it um and it's it's really not bad. I, I I don't think it's an overwhelmingly incredible experience start to finish. I I really am only jumping into it to catch up on some of the stuff I missed this year as we're kind of quickly approaching game of the year stuff. And I don't think that it it really is as bad as a lot of the the feedback you hear on it. Um, is there is a decent game underneath there? Uh, but that being said. I do encounter a lot of issues in that game uh, yeah. that just kind of bust the experience for me. Yeah, the few hours I did play, I had problems where, um, like, a guy literally just spawned right next to me and was shooting me in the side of the head. Um, yep. And then another time, uh, my guy was just stuck from the waist down in the ground. Yep. And I couldn't do anything other than reboot the game. I've had complete and entire audio dropouts where the audio just disappears entirely. Uh, I've had partial audio dropouts where only certain noises work and certain ones don't. Um, I actually was playing with my brother and a few other people uh, earlier this morning, and it was my first experience with co-op, so I don't know if this is a normal thing or not as we didn't play super long, but uh, we encountered a ton of issues. Uh, I fast traveled to a bivouac site, jumped into the bivouac, uh, which is like the campsites that you have in the game for fast traveling and, and setting up your gear and whatnot. And I came out of the bivouac and it just spawned me under a rock, uh, literally from camp. So all wow. of a sudden I'm un underneath a rock and trying to figure out how to get out. We also had a weird issue where uh, for some reason it seemed like the game was detecting that every vehicle was underwater. So whenever you would see a vehicle, you couldn't get in it because it was underwater. And the only way that we figured that out is vehicles would start spawning in at an angle and slowly start falling like they would when they were underwater and then like sometimes you would manage to get in a vehicle but then it would jump up in the air do that weird angle thing and then play like water sound effects and kick you out of the vehicle like you're swimming that's so weird and to be fair like we're playing this game, what, three months after release? Two and a half months after release? Yeah, it's been out for a hot minute. And so we're probably not even encountering many of the bugs that did exist when it launched. And that's what's so weird about it is that this really feels like a game that just doesn't have a focus or a polish to it. Uh, like I said, there is some uh, very enjoyable stuff at the core there. I think the weapon customization is very good. Uh, the gunplay feels very nice uh, in this game, and I, I traditionally don't really care for third-person shooters, uh, but I, I do quite enjoy this one. Um, one of the other reasons I'm, I'm jumping into it, and this is definitely worth mentioning, is that uh, Ubisoft recently put out a survey uh, to players on, on their thoughts on the game, their feedback, what they think about it, uh, with intents to essentially overhaul the entire experience and, and basically craft it into a new game. So... 
Um, I think that'll be interesting to follow and, and see where they take it as a lot of the player feedback is relatively harsh. I mean, even things as simple as like you you have a parachute in the game and you can drop out of vehicles and parachute, but you're also supposed to be able to base jump off cliffs, but it's only certain angles that you can jump off of cliffs from. Like it has to be a sheer drop. It can't be a partial drop. Uh, it, it's just really, really weird. And I'm I'm interested to see what comes out when they kind of throw it back into the oven for a little bit. But uh, you asked if I picked it up on a sale. Uh, I think that's the only way I would recommend picking it up uh, at this point. So Yeah, I agree. Um, and I don't know if the sale's still going on. I imagine it probably is, but it was only $30 on Xbox. So definitely worth it at that cost, I think, because there's a lot of content there. Yeah, it's certainly a game that you can play for a long time. They just dropped a raid for it. Uh, which is something that I kind of want to get to, but I don't know that I want to put up with that much bullshit to get there. Um, we'll see. It, like I said, something to check back in on. They've got season uh, pass type of content for it that's free. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't know. It's just not there yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything else about Breakpoint? I'm sure I'll play more of it and have more to say on future shows. Yeah, I mean... I. I would be interested to jump in co-op and just see what you think there, as I think the game really does shine there uh, when you're attacking different fortresses and, and taking down different enemy encampments. Uh, it's just a much tighter experience that way. Uh, so I would like to jump in there, and I, I do recommend that if anybody's playing it uh, and has maybe fallen off of it. But other than that, uh, it's it's really not worth sitting here talking about. So uh, my go-to is move on. All right, and the last game that we've both played... Um over the holiday is Halo Reach. Um, Halo Reach just came out on both PC and Xbox One in the Master Chief Collection. And I know I played a bunch last night and I played some during lunch today because I'm working remote today. But um, yeah, I'm loving it. I don't know about you. It's it's fantastic. It's, it's Halo. It's exactly what I want out of the experience. Reach was not my favorite, uh, mo most favorite title in the Halo franchise. Um, so it's it's not the exact thing that I want, but it's it's a damn good port. And I I think what's so weird about the whole experience though is that like we started this decade with Halo Reach, and now we're ending this decade with Halo Reach because it released in 2010. And so almost 10 years later, it, it's just so wild to see people playing Reach all over again. And that's something we're going to talk about here in just a minute with one of our news stories. But this game has launched to astronomical numbers for a game that released a decade ago. Yeah, and it looks great. Like, it looks so good. Like, I'm surprised how good it looks. Because I played Reach um, because it's backwards compatible on Xbox. I played mm -hmm. it I played it on my Xbox One not too long ago by, um, you know, just playing the 360 version. And it didn't look as good as this does. I think it looks really good. Yeah, and it plays super smooth, too. Like, I haven't experienced a lot of hitching, uh, no load time issues or anything. Granted, I've only played the multiplayer. I haven't really dipped my toes into the campaign yet. But what I have played has been real good. The matchmaking doesn't seem to take a super long time uh, outside of the first hour or two that the uh, servers went live uh, while it was still kind of populating with people downloading the game. And so, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's Halo Reach. It's exactly what you want it to be. Uh, the game is solid. It's smooth. I've been playing a ton of SWAT uh, so far, and man, it just feels so good. Yeah, I honestly am surprised at how smooth this is running. Um, because if you remember when you know Master Chief Collection first launched, it was just a complete mess. And this is how it should have been when it originally launched. Is how, what we have now with Reach because everything runs smooth. Nobody's having really any connectivity issues. At least from what I've heard and experienced in my time with it. But... No, I agree absolutely. All of the matchmaking has been real smooth and solid. And I gotta say, one of my favorite changes that they've added to the Master Chief Collection as a whole is um, I don't know if you messed with it, but if you go into your settings, there's a spot where you can selectively install or uninstall different parts of the Master Chief Collection to lower the download size or uh, your your file size essentially. Uh, and only, really only keep the parts that you want. So, like, uh, I went ahead and uninstall, uninstalled a ton of the campaigns uh, as I'm only going to be playing multiplayer from here on forward, and I can just reinstall those at any time. And it, like, halved my file size, uh, which was fantastic, because that game is freaking massive. 
It's so big. I didn't know you could do that. That's awesome. Uh, that's a great feature that they added. Um, another thing to note is I've been watching a lot of pro streamers. Like I just saw Ninja was playing it earlier, so I was kind of watching. Wow. And um, apparently they've been playing with with controllers on PC instead of going mouse and keyboard. And I don't know if that's just because of their muscle memory from back in the day or what the deal is, but a lot of them have been playing with, with controllers instead of mouse and keyboard, which I thought was interesting. I did hear about some acceleration issues on the PC port. I'm actually installing it uh, right now. I paused it so we could record, but um, I'm, I'm working on installing it now, and I'm, I'm excited to check it out as I was a huge fan. I talked about it a few months ago of the El Dorito stuff that was going on with yeah. the um, custom port of Halo Online, and that felt really, really good. And to hear that they're having some issues, I, I think it's an issue with uh, specifically... Uh, mouse input being read as thumbstick input and there being some kind of like not instant uh, read there but um, hopefully they they get a handle on that that's interesting though to see a lot of these guys especially ninja I mean you talk about one of the most popular streamers out there who is only a mouse and keyboard guy like yeah I don't think I've ever seen him touch a controller uh, in the time that he's been mega popular uh, and for him to jump on with controller is just Super weird, but yeah, super well, cool I mean, at the same time. I mean, he was a pro in Reach. That's true. That's true. So, I mean, it makes sense that he would naturally want to pick up the controller. I think that he's been kind of doing like a mixture. Because I know that he was saying one game he was playing mouse and keyboard, and then they started losing, so he picked up the controller. Because, Interesting. Because he's just naturally better with it, so I don't know. Maybe he's trying to get used to mouse and keyboard because I think naturally the PC competition is going to... You know they're gonna end up destroying you in the long run once they get good at the game, right? Because this shout is still... out to my controller peeps though, man. I I'm I'm a controller guy. So. Oh yeah, me too. But I tried. I have it installed on my computer as well, and I tried mouse and keyboard and I couldn't do it. So I don't know. <laughs> it, part of it could be that I didn't know all the controls. <laughs> You're right. I I will say that's probably been one of the hardest things. You know, we talked about it in the intro and. Uh, coming back to Halo after so long and playing games like, you know, Call of Duty, Outer Worlds, uh, all that kind of uh, more modernized shooter uh, as of late. Uh, it's it's very strange to go back to Halo, and I really can't find a control scheme that feels good because just everything feels wonky. Yeah, a thing to note, you said you were going to play the campaign probably eventually. Uh, you have yeah. To, you actually have to pay for it. So that's it's actually a really weird situation with it is it free i've been on looking PC into it with game Pass i'm not sure i haven't been able to find a good answer from this uh what i what i've kind of found but what's not really showing in my experience is th i think the way it's intended is that uh with game pass you get everything you don't have to pay for anything separate you don't have to buy anything separate you don't have to do anything. You just have literally the campaign, the multiplayer, the full shebang all together. Uh, if you have the game on console, so let's say you either bought the disc or you bought the game digitally, but you don't have Game Pass, then you have to buy the campaign, but the multiplayer is available to you for free separately as part of the game, but the campaign is an add-on for like five or 10 bucks or something like that. So it's not a, an, an outrageous amount, uh, but still a little odd that you have to pay for it. Then. Uh, if you're on PC, if you buy the Master Chief collection right now uh, in full because the whole thing's not available quite yet, then you'll get Reach as a part of it and everything else that releases for no additional cost. But you can also just buy Reach for right now and pick up Reach and then pay for everything else piecemeal later and get a discount on it. It's this whole weird spider web. I, I, I'm starting to look like a, a freaking serial killer. I've got like a giant uh, poster board up with like pictures and crap and yarn running between points just to figure this out. And none of it makes sense. Which, that being said, I have it on Game Pass on my Xbox. And it's not allowing me to, to access the campaign. It's saying that it's locked. But from yeah. everything that I've heard, I should be able to play it. So it's a weird thing. I don't know if it's just early launch jitters or what the problem is. I guess we'll see as we go on, but uh, yeah, it's it's a little wonky. Yeah, because I have Game Pass as well, and when I launched it, it was like, "Hey, buy Reach now." So I like clicked it out of curiosity, and it was like, I think it's seven ninety nine if you're a gold member, or ten dollars. Interesting. If you're 
So I don't know if I, I have a feeling we might still have to buy it with Game Pass. Yeah, and see, and one of my friends that I talked to that I was playing Reach with on launch day, he has Game Pass as well, and he said he was able to access the game no problem uh, and play the campaign uh, without paying any additional fee or anything like that. So I'm not a, sure exactly what's happening here. Um, it's something that we'll probably have to wait for Here's some clarification a question, for. Do you own the game outside of Game Pass or no? I think I do. Because I, I think I do as well. So maybe it's just registering like the purchase of the game and not the Game Pass version. Weird. I wonder, have you tried going into like the Microsoft Store and actually looking for Halo Reach as a, a separate add-on and seeing if like it'll just let you download it? Or uh, I, I guess access it with Game Pass or whatever the terminology is? No, I don't think so. I'm going to have to give that a shot because I wonder if it displays a price there or if it's uh, just kind of a, a weird situation because of us owning the standard game by itself. Yeah, I think that my guess would be that since we own the standard game because like I you know, I pre-ordered it before it even came out, um, the Master Chief Collection that is, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's just registering it as being, hey, you own this, but you don't own Reach. Like, do you want to buy Reach? And it's not taking into account the fact that I also have Game Pass. Do you have Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate? Game Pass Ultimate. Okay, so do I. So might be some, some issues uh, just with Game Pass all around or something. <coughs> yeah, weird. Um. Yeah. Other than that, should we move on to the news? Which is kind of like a good segue from Reach. Um... So this first article uh, I'll go over comes from The Verge. Uh, Tom Warren writes, Halo Reach becomes a Steam most played game on launch day. Uh, Halo Reach launched on Steam yesterday and it, it immediately raced into the top of Valve's charts of most played games. After originally debuting on the 360 nearly 10 years ago, Microsoft has brought back the classic on PC with an impressive port that includes unlocked frame rates, a field of view slider, and even ultra-wide monitor support. Oh, that's pretty cool. I would love to see that. Um, at its launch day peak, 161,000 people were playing Halo Reach, catapulting it into the fourth spot on Steam's most played titles. While it's now dropped behind Destiny 2, Rainbow Six Siege, and Grand Theft Auto V, Reach is now comfortably in seventh place. So now I wonder if these numbers... Are these only people who have launched the game via Steam? Because... This probably doesn't include people who launched it on Game Pass, right? That would be my assumption. From the looks of it, I, I think this is just straight Steam numbers, not uh, Windows Store or uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass PC. Yeah, I still that's pretty impressive, though. Yeah, I mean, when you take into consideration that like uh, Steam is is like the marketplace on PC, and for it to hit that high on the charts for that marketplace, uh, especially being a 10 year old game, uh, man, it's just absolutely insane. But I tell you what, Microsoft is absolutely seeing dollar signs right now. Uh, oh, yeah. because people want Halo on computer again, man. And as they're releasing them, they're just going to get more and more money because more and more people are going to be like, Oh, I didn't like reach or I didn't like Halo CE, but I loved Halo too. And then, right. and then that's when they're going to pay up. It's so smart, and it's such a good move, and I'm I'm so thankful. Uh, shout out to the guys behind the El Dorito mod that they even really took on this territory in the face of you know legal battles and and all that other stuff, just to kind of give Microsoft the push in the direction to say, hey, there are people that want these games on this platform, and you're not catering to them, and so we're going to, and and it's just it really seems like that was the the final final domino to to push them over the edge. So I'm so thankful for that. But yeah, this is. These numbers are insane, man. I mean, uh, 161,000 people. That's almost a fifth of a million, man, uh, playing just a 10-year-old game. Uh, and that's just Steam. So I, you have to imagine right. at least double that we're playing, including Xbox and Xbox Game Pass game or on PC. That's just so great. And, and especially with all the... the <clears throat> you know, different supports that they're adding to it with the, the ultra-wide monitor support, uh, unlock frame rates and everything, and it, it really just gives you a chance to play these games like they were never available before. Uh, I would be interested, though, um, I want to say that I read something not terribly long ago 
saying that they were interested in exploring the possibility of uh, cross-play support between the two, if that's not a live thing already. Um, I, I do not believe it is, because when I was on PC, I saw a friend on the game, and then when I went over to Xbox, he was not on the game. Okay, that's and what I, I thought. I know he was still playing. I know that a lot of people have been asking, and, and like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that I saw that they were interested in it, which would be awesome. That would be fantastic to it, see. Uh, yeah, it, it would agenda. be cool, especially for like custom games. I think it'd be awesome. Maybe not ranked playlists, but social playlists. I could see that happening. Ooh, saying that, you just reminded me of my massive and only gripe with Halo Reach so far uh, as part of the Master Chief Collection, and the that is custom playlists? games. Oh. No, it's custom games and lobbies, man. Uh, and, and custom maps like you you probably saw a couple articles leading up to this saying that there were like 6.2 million maps ported over yeah, from the, the original share. Halo Reach yeah which is great but it's still the worst system on the face of the planet to find any of this fucking content have you yeah. tried it all? no I've not I saw that you were in Forge yesterday though yeah so me and some buddies were messing in Forge because we were actually trying to find some old uh, custom game types and, and custom maps and everything um, just from back in the day to relive some memories, maybe some race maps, uh, you know, some of the cool stuff. And yep. uh, through hours and hours of digging between official facts of the Reddit page, uh, different forum posts and everything, uh, I finally found out that it still works the same way that the old way did, which is that in order to find a map, you have to know who has that map yep. or that game type and you have to search their game tag or gamer tag or name to find any of that content, which is the worst way yeah, to sucks. share any of this. Yeah, I completely agree that that sucks. <laughs> I just can't believe that they they wouldn't put a better system, and maybe that's something that they're going to work on over time uh, for this to to really let people share their content. But man, is that an outdated system? It sucked back then. It sucked now. Please fix it. I hate it. Yeah, um, but I'm loving Reach, uh, the updated version. Uh, I'll definitely play through all the campaigns, probably once we start getting more Halo hype for Halo Infinite. Oh, yes. Which I have to imagine is a launch title for Scarlet at this point. Has to be. Yep. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next article. You want to read this one? Sure, I'll bounce into this one. So this next one uh, I actually pulled from Kotaku here, uh, and it says... Destiny 2's next update finally explores the mysteries of Saint-14. Uh, this article was written by Ethan Gock. Uh, it reads, He's a robot, a titan, and he died a long time ago, but who was Saint-14 really? The character has been part of a Destiny lore going back to the launch of the first game in 2014, but players are now more curious about him than ever, because Bungie has revealed that he'll be part of the game's Season of Dawn when it launches on December 10th. His role in the Destiny universe has been hinted at for years, but this is the first time players have ever gotten the chance to see him up close and hear him speak in his own voice. Yeah, so this follows um, a stream that hit, uh, what, today? Uh, yeah, today, uh, from Bungie, uh, just detailing their plans for the next season, which, uh, like I said earlier, was Season of Dawn, uh, and that launches on December 10th and has a ton of new content. Uh, from the looks of it, you're going to have some time travel stuff happening, uh, we're going back to Mercury, everybody's favorite planet. Just kidding, it's the worst. Uh, but they're <laughs> giving it some reasons to breathe. Uh, thankfully, finally, I just hope that I can ride my damn sparrow on you that can. planet for once. You can. What? Oh, yeah, I read no it way. online. You can, yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I'm in. I'm sold. I'm going to buy the whole <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah, so there's this, this new activity uh, that, that references a thing called a sundial uh, that allows you to kind of, uh, through some of Osiris's help, uh, jump through time, uh, edit different uh, things happening, and uh, from the looks of it, go back in time and actually save uh, Saint-14, which was the greatest Titan that ever lived. Uh, I gotta say, watching that trailer was pretty badass. Hearing his voice for the first time was super, super cool. Uh, did you get a chance to check it out? Uh, no, I did not see it, um, but I'll definitely watch it tonight. Uh, quick question, how far have you gotten in your, like, <clears throat> I guess your Destiny 2 that season pass battle pass thing did you finish that? um i gotta be honest i actually don't even know how far i am in it uh i fell off a little while ago i'm kind of running into the same problem that i had with destiny 2 a little earlier uh in the year and that's just a drought of content 
Like yeah. there's stuff to do, but it's it's really just repeating things over and over. So anymore, I just pop in when new stuff hits. Yeah, like the last time I played is when they introduced the that quest line for that new bow that they added. Yeah. That's that's the last time I hopped in. Yeah, mine was shortly after that. So yeah, uh, about the same time. I think I'm uh, if uh, man, I I want to say I'm like level fifty something gotcha. in that battle pass. So. A good ways, but yeah, not uh, not towards the end game goal. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely exciting that there's more and more um, Destiny content coming out. Um, and so, is is since this is a new season, that battle pass is gonna reset, right? To new stuff, I assume. From my understanding, yes. Uh, my, it's I'm a little fuzzy on it as it's been a while, but yeah, I, I do believe with the new season comes a new battle pass. Uh, new kind of Eververse packages. Uh, I guess they don't really technically do the Eververse packages anymore, just old school ones uh, for old content. Um, I did see some exotic teases, though, uh, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, very exciting times. I'm sure me and Connor are going to be talking about Destiny a lot coming up. Um, but let's go into our next news article. This comes from Tech Radar. Uh, Vic Hood writes, uh, Sony hints uh, that it's done with handheld consoles, ruling out a PS Vita or PSP return. Uh, Sony filed a patent for a PlayStation game cartridge that sparked speculation that a new handheld console console could be on the way. However, it was eventually clarified that these were cartridges for an existing kid's toy in Japan, snubbing out hope that Sony is planning to venture back into portable devices. And now it seems Sony has put the final nail in the portable console coffin. Uh, In an interview with Game Informer, Sony Interactive Entertainment President and CEO Jim Ryan seemed to confirm that the company has no plans for developing a successor to the PS Vita and PlayStation Portable. Uh, PlayStation Vita was brilliant in many ways, and the actual gaming experience was great, but clearly it's a business that we're no longer in now, Ryan said. So yeah. Kind of sad if you're a uh, big PSP or PS Vita fan, but you can't say you didn't see this coming, especially with all of the game streaming that's, you know, coming now. And PlayStation's is inevitable, I guess. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And you look at the track record for some of this hardware, and uh, Sony just hasn't done a very good job of, of really supporting uh, the catalog on the Vita or the PSP back in the day. Granted, I, I think the PSP did a little bit better than the Vita, uh, but Sony just seemed to put out these awesome pieces of hardware that they really didn't know how to handle or what to do with, uh, which was a bummer. I mean, the Vita had some great features. I don't know if you ever got a chance to uh, get hands-on with one, but the remote play features were fantastic uh, at a time way before anybody was talking about video game streaming. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at my dusty Vita right next to me. Oh, sweet. So you do have one. Uh, I'm I sure do. you're enjoying the the deluge of, of games they're releasing currently for it. Oh, yeah. What is there, like one a month maybe? <laughs> if that. I, yeah. I think that they're, as of March, officially done with physical cartridges. Uh, last March. Uh, and I think the network is getting ready to shut down here pretty soon, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Already. That's, that's really sad. <laughs> yeah, because tell me about because it. then I'm going to have to mod my Vita to play games. I mean, you know, maybe that's the best thing to do with it anyway, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but we're not saying that's what you should do. Yeah, we're not recommending it. Just saying that you could do it. Uh, but, yeah, very sad to see. It's kind of the end of an era, you know, like pretty much as long as I've been a gamer, for the most part. Um, PlayStation's been in the portable market, but it seems like that's going away. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think it's for the better personally because with things like xCloud, like how can you compete with that? It's true, and, and with the popularity of, of mobile gaming platforms, the handheld space is such a tough nut to crack and get into, and you look at people that have done it successfully recently, and the immediate person that jumps to mind is Nintendo uh, with the Nintendo Switch, and uh, that's a phenomenal platform, but I really think that the success of that platform isn't because it's a handheld, but more the support and catalog that's available on that system. Uh, more than anything else so um, sad to see Uh, you know there was a lot of great years and great memories with those two platforms Uh, but I think we can be thankful that uh, 
Sony is kind of refocusing their efforts on the PlayStation 5 and the next-gen VR that hopefully they're making. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, yeah, moving on, you want to take the last article? Sure. Uh, so this one we kind of pulled. We'll probably not spend a lot of time talking about this, but uh, this is coming from Jason Schreier out of Kotaku, uh, and it says, Sources, Microsoft is still planning a cheaper, diskless, next-gen Xbox. Uh, so I'm not even going to read this article. I'm just going to kind of bounce through some of the hot points here. But if you remember, back when the first uh, word of a next-gen platform from Microsoft was coming out, uh, at the time it was said that there was two code names in development side-by-side side as different SKUs uh, for the next-gen Xbox. Uh, the first one was codenamed Anaconda, which seems to be the one that they moved forward with. Uh, and the next one was codenamed Lockhart, which was... Uh, by all intents and purposes, a diskless, uh, possibly streaming-only platform uh, that came at a much cheaper price point uh, that maybe featured some some lower-spec hardware uh, and was just more accessible for the common gamer. Uh, and probably six, seven, eight months ago or so, Microsoft came out and squashed. Uh, actually, I actually want to say at last year's E3, uh, Microsoft came out and squashed uh, pretty much any kind of word of a uh, second iteration of the next-gen console or a, a second SKU that was available and said that, no, Scarlet is it. That's all we're focusing on. That is one platform. There is not a second and, and basically uh, kind of killed any hope for that. Uh, but just recently, uh, as of today, some words popped up that Lockhart might not be as dead as it seems. Um, it appears that uh, some of that's still in the works, um, no doubt uh, due to success of the Xbox One S All Digital, and word is pretty sparse on it right now, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Not a lot of talk on it, not a lot of word other than it does exist, uh, coming from some reputable sources, uh, but I'm interested to see what it looks like, uh, if, if it does exist and how it fits in uh, with Microsoft's strategy for the next gen. Yeah, I have a few few thoughts on this. First of all, I don't think they ever canceled it. I think that it's just something that was set to the side while they mm -hmm. focus on, you know, the more more uh the more powerful version of them just so that they really get that set in stone for release. But another thing is I really hope that they don't release Lockhart, you know, at the same time. I really hope it's kind of like a future release because I think it's going to be very confusing to consumers or you know people buying it for their kids for christmas absolutely to figure out oh which one do i buy like it's already confusing enough with xbox one s with with just the xbox one xbox one s xbox one sad edition xbox one x <laughs> it's no it's just, true there's a lot it's absolutely there. true it's tough to keep track of it it makes it difficult to figure out but also that it's it's tough for your diehard consumer too uh, because it, it kind of makes it so that the company doesn't have a, a specific focus. Uh, and it's very clear that they're splitting things. It, it jumps back to the memory of um, when the Xbox One launched. And at the time, Microsoft was dead set on still supporting the Xbox 360 and still carrying on with it. And that tune changed very quickly, uh, both, I think, for technical limitation reasons is... Developers just won't, don't want to develop for lower end, uh, old school hardware. Uh, they want to focus on the newest stuff, and that's what gamers want too. They don't want to play the same console that they've had. They want the latest, greatest. At, at least your casual, general consumer does, uh, and they don't want to stick with what they've had when there's a newer, greater thing in the market. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see where they put this. If this is a streaming solution, if this is just a discless version that you can get for a little bit cheaper or if it's something else entirely. And I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. I think maybe the best strategy with this is waiting and launching it later down the line uh, yeah. when they have a set specific focus uh, in, in the picture. Yep, I completely agree. All right, and uh, with that, let's uh, get to the topic of the show, which this is your last and final warning because we are going to go full spoilers for Jedi Fallen Order. Um, we're going to give you five seconds to shut my voice off of your speakers. Get out of uh, here. Go. Um, before we start talking about it. All right, Connor. 
How about that part, huh? Man, that game is just so good start to finish in that whole vader sequence man is just insane i could not believe it my jaw was on the floor the entire time oh me too and like when it i like i first heard his voice like you know his breathing Mm -hmm. and i was like ah, i wonder if that's just kind of like a you know they're trying to make me think that that could happen right And, and then they're like vader's here no no what did she say uh, she's like, he's here. Yeah, she starts like freaking out yeah. and like just really building up to something happening, and you just hear that breath, man. And oh, it's crazy. Just changes the whole thing, changes the whole game because you you spend the entire experience kind of wondering how does this tie into the Star Wars universe? You know, what place does this have? Because you hear you hear uh, about a lot of planets that don't really have relevance to the movies, uh, and then that scene just changes the whole thing, man. And really cements the fact that you're playing a Star Wars game. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah, uh, honestly, I thought that maybe there would be a, another cameo or two through the game, but I'm glad there's there wasn't, because they didn't try and force this into be anything. You know what I mean? They didn't yeah. try and make this too, too, I don't know how, like too canon, I guess you could say. Like, it's very yeah. much its own standalone thing. You don't do anything to Vader that, um, you know, would be known in any of the movies or anything. It's just kind of like you were there. And they really don't rely on characters that are already built and, and taking their stories and adding it to it just to give it more substance. They really definitely focused on, on Grease, um, you know, in, in Cal and the rest of the crew all traveling together. I got to say though, it did feel a little weird towards the end. I don't, I don't know what you thought of, um, the girl from Dathomir, uh, what's her name, uh, that you pick up, like, right at the end. She's your final crew member. Oh, um, the witch lady? Yes, yeah, it's uh, Night Sister. She has, like, an actual name, and I, I can't think yeah, of it for I, the I can't remember either. But she's with you for such a short time, and I was super bummed about that, because I think she's a crazy interesting character. Yeah, uh, like, like, essentially a witch, which is bizarre. <laughs> it's like a gray area, you know. It's it's not quite a dark uh, force user, not quite a light force user. She just kind of used it to survive and and grow up. And I really hope that we get a sequel. You got to think with how much that game sold and and how well oh, the yeah. reception has been generally, we get one. Yeah, I mean, you would assume we get one, but at the same time, like the license is up with EA, so and we're kind of unsure how that's going to work. Oh, that's true. It is up, isn't it? So, but I must. <laughs> You see, it's such a gray area right now because we don't know if they're going to take that licensing and have already promised it to another developer or if they're just going to like kind of split it out between developers who pitch ideas. Kind of like what Marvel does. I would love to see them piecemeal it. Yeah, I I would love to see them just take it and say, hey, we think you guys do great work. Here's a piece of the property for you to work on and flesh out. You know, don't, don't just give it to a specific publisher because then you're really limiting all the talent on the market uh, that can potentially work on it. I mean, I would love to see a Naughty Dog Star Wars game. I, I feel like that would just be insanity. Uh, it, it would be would it would get. be this game, but on to a completely different level. Right, yeah. You know, Respawn did a phenomenal job with this, but you got to think that a Naughty Dog would have knocked this out of the park, you know? Yeah, but I find it hard to believe that Disney would want any, um, like, first party Star Wars games because they want to get this in as many hands as possible. Um, but yeah, what, what, oh, when did you get the double ended saber? I, man, when did, did you I do it early that? on? Or I think I got it incredibly early on. I, I went to Bagano, which is the first planet, and then I went out to the second planet, uh, the one that I cannot remember the name of, spent a little bit of time there. And then knew there was more stuff to do on Bagano because I'd unlocked uh, a few different force powers. And so I bounced back to Bagano and found it like on my first trip back to Bagano. Uh, so I, I had it very, very early in the game. Yeah, I got it very early as well. Um, I think that it would have been way cooler if the. So at XO19, I think it was, they had a trailer for the game and it kind of spoiled that moment because it showed him like towards the end of the trailer, like wield a double ended saber. And that's something we had not seen before. 
So it was kind right. of a surprise, and it kind of ruined the surprise. And then also on Twitter, everybody's like, I'm not going to say what it is, but definitely go here as soon as you can. It's like, yeah, my, <coughs> like it, it just kind of ruined it for me, I guess. Diminish the experience a little bit. No, I agree. Yeah. And I wish that uh, some things like that there, there was um, on that note, uh, apparently there was a Thanksgiving ad that ruined the end of the game. Oh, yeah, I did see that. I was watching uh, football and the trailer came on for the game and it just fucking showed Darth Vader. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, why? Who agreed to run this? Like, who at Respawn was like, yep, that's a good trailer. You got to figure that's that's a Disney move right there. That has to be. There's no way Respawn would have chose to spoil that. Yeah, like, let's sell more copies by throwing Darth Vader in the trailer. I don't know. Yeah, that was it just kind of cheapened it a little bit. Yeah, it that part, eh, not so great. But other than that, man, I I love the end, and I I really like how, um, you you know, you get to to right up before you go to Elam, which is the the final planet. Um, aside from obviously going to where Darth Vader is and whatnot, but uh, you go to Elam to to recraft a lightsaber, and it up to that point, it really feels like you've attained pretty much everything that you're going to attain. Like there's nothing else for you to hit. You start really filling out that skill tree and and there's really, you know, maybe you don't have saber throw yet, or uh, maybe you don't have group slow or, you know, stupid things that don't really matter to the game. So it didn't feel like there was going to be that much changing it up. But once you rebuild on Elam and then it allows you to start separating your saber in combat. Yeah. That was freaking sweet, man. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Cause that, cause then you can kind of like go in between, um, and then you can just kind of charge with the two. Mm-hmm. I I wish yeah. that you could like always have them separate, but I do too. But I, I feel mean, like cheapening it to, uh, only like special moves and and stuff that drains your force from a gameplay aspect. I get it, but I I wish that there was just that one other option. You know, like the single blade, the double blade, and then the two blade, like. Yeah, it fuck could, man, just give me the whole thing. It could have just been a design thing. Like maybe they didn't have time to add that in. That's true. So who knows? But yeah, overall the game is amazing. Definitely pick it up, especially now because I think you can find it for like forty bucks now, and it yeah, just came out a few weeks ago. Just starting to hit sales at this point, um, and it, it really absolutely is worth it. I I think that it's it stands up as one of the best Star Wars games of all time. Um, Maybe For even sure. one of the best Star Wars stories. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I loved the journey with Cal, and I really felt like I grew with him as he went through his story, because at the beginning, I didn't give a shit about Cal. Like, I, I thought he was kind of a cocky little shit, and that he just, I, I you know, I, I really didn't care for his character, but they made me care over the span. And, and Grease, man. Oh, Grease. <laughs> I'm super hot He's so cool. Grease. And, and Greasy the thing is, money, baby. <laughs> and the thing is, is like, it, oh yeah, he has a bunch of funny little jokes. Where like, at one point, he's like, he's like, hey, who used the bathroom last? <laughs> yeah, or the yeah. salt, uh, the salt uh, sketch. Did you catch that? No, I don't think so. Oh my god, there there was a Twitter thread on it that was just fantastic. There was a, a, a editor uh, for the game that ed- was editing cutscenes and decided to leave the gag in, but basically. There's a conversation in the game, and they're all sitting down eating, and he starts shaking a salt shaker onto oh, his food, yeah. and just does it through the entire conversation. Yeah, and I did uh, catch that, and, and I was like, I remember I was in a party chat with some friends, and I was like, "Why the fuck is this guy putting so much <laughs> salt?" And then they started so laughing. Funny. They're like, "Oh, you're there, huh?" <laughs> it's just an absolutely fantastic game, start to finish, and I'm very excited to see what uh, respawn pumps out next so yeah i mean i have to imagine there's going to be a sequel especially because like they let cal live at the end of the right. game and it totally changed too it subverted your expectations like the ending that you thought was going to happen did not happen unless there's some sort of dlc that they're planning which i doubt because i think they would have announced it already yeah and the game definitely deserves some more uh work done to it whether it be a sequel or a massive standalone expansion uh, to the first game or whatever it is. Yeah, I completely agree. But like graphically, this game it looks awesome. I know people had their doubts at first because it's respawn, which is fair. Uh, they've never made a game like this, right? Not that I know of. Yeah, not like a full blown like uh, you know 
hand-to-hand combat, uh, open-world exploration game. You know, you, you think of what they've done, and it's Titanfall 2 kind of is their pent-ultimate experience, and that was still an on-the-rails, like, guided shooter at the end of the day. And what's even more impressive about how good this game is is that this is their second major release this year. The first one That's being true. Apex Legends, which is still killing it. People play that game every day. It's Just insane. <clears throat> I love it. I, I'm going to continue to love it. I'm going to play more of it. I'm excited to talk about it when it comes to Game of the Year stuff, as I think it definitely deserves some recognition uh, this year, and I'm I'm definitely bummed whenever a site announces that they're not going to be considering it this year. Yeah, um, because it's just going to get lost next year. For it's, sure, it's There's not going to be on much any list next year. So, um, but yeah, uh, great game. Definitely pick it up, especially because it's on sale. Uh, probably now. I know that uh, my coworker he was looking to get an Xbox because he's hasn't had an Xbox in years, mm-hmm. um, and he picked up the Xbox one S bundle for $200 and it came with this game that and he was going to buy deal. it. Yeah. He was going to buy it anyway. So I was like, why not? And it came with a $40 gift card. So he essentially got the Xbox for a hundred bucks. <laughs> That's so good. Which is nuts. But um, yeah, definitely pick it up. I would probably give this game like an eight or a nine out of 10. For overall. sure. I mean, I, I saw their first um, list of patch notes that they're about to drop for it. And seeing that, and, and knowing where it's going, I think that this game is is by far a solid nine uh, for me. Yeah. Uh, well, this has been the uh, Jedi Fallen Order spoiler cast uh, for the Pixel Street Podcast, and this is episode eighty four. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Pixel Street Pod. Uh, check out our Facebook by searching for Pixel Street Podcast over there. You can follow myself on Twitter at Campo63 or on Mixer, mixer.com slash Campo63. I have not streamed in a while. I've been sick, but uh, I definitely want to get back to it. Uh, Connor, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the Real Birch. That's uh, Birch like the tree, but without the I. So B-R-C-H. I'm also on Mixer under B-R-C-H, Birch again. Uh, come check me out. Come hang out. I'm actually thinking about streaming a little bit tonight. Uh, the day that we're recording this uh which obviously you have missed uh but uh, yeah come hang out sometime let's talk on twitter uh other than that follow the podcast and uh may the force be with you may the force be with you we will be right back here next week for episode 85 of the pixel street podcast bye see ya <laughs>